So now I also want to draw an image of how Ayurveda works. People usually look at their life and think the life is linear, like this. And in the linear meaning, here you get birth, B stands for birth, and then here you are a child, C stands for your child, your childhood, and then you grow up, you're kind of a young adult, you go to college, A stands for an adult, you go to college, and then you get married when you graduate or you get a job, M stands for, right? Here you have kids, and then at some point you hit or you meet 40s, you're starting to enjoy all of the financial gain that you achieved throughout the career, and then after 50, two things happen. If a person starts to grow emotionally and spiritually, they start to go high into wisdom. But if the person is not growing spiritually, what happens? They start aging and experiencing an old age where they start to feel angry, resentful, bitter, upset, having a lot of expectations and demanding things, demanding love from children or parents, and constantly nagging and complaining, and complaining about government, about parents, about children, about grandchildren, about economy and money, and nothing is good enough because they're growing into the old age of frustration and misery, basically. Everything that they wanted out of life, they didn't experience, and now they just want things instead of going into wisdom. And when the person grows spiritually and they go into wisdom, what starts to happen, instead of demanding and wanting things from parents or children or grandchildren, they start to serve. They understand their role of an older. And they're calling the kids and asking, how can I help you with grandkids? They go into community and they start to help feeding people or educating because they're really clear about their purpose and they're being of service. So there's this big difference. And if and again, we're looking about just a linear way, then at this point at 80 or 90 years old, the person dies, right? This death, they just die. But this is how people view life in a linear way. Vedas and Vedic spiritual knowledge is not viewing life this way at all. Vedas are saying that life is actually cyclical, right? that a person is here not to just born and then just die and on the last day he meets uh, a God to answer whether it's going to go to hell or heaven. Uh, Vedas believe that there's a reason why we're born in this country, why we're born into this family, and why we're going through these experiences in life, that there's a lot of reasons for that. Because why would somebody born in a family of a queen, and they have hundreds of servants, right? And somebody is born in South Africa, in the worst neighborhood, and they have a home that is less than $20, and the roof can be knocked down at any point, they don't have a clean water, they don't have toilet, and they're hardly surviving. It's just like, imagine if we will be running in the Olympic Games, and the run is 100 meters, you're standing at the point zero, and I'm standing at the point of 80 meters. You have to run 100 meters, but I'll run only 20 meters and I'll get to the finish line. It's kind of unfair, right? Or two people starting the business, one has one million and one has only $100. The chances of a person who has one million dollars are much higher than the person who has only $100. And so Vedas are explaining that we as a soul chose this life, we chose our parents, and we have to go through certain experiences in life in order to pass the exam in life. An exam is with our partner, exam with our parents, exam with our children, exam as a worker even, and as a boss, and as a friend, and even as a citizen of your country. So there's so many exams. And by the way, Vedas are also saying that there's 33 million spiritual laws 
out there. <laughs> Obviously, we will not know 33 million laws, but we have to be responsible to know at least 50. Because we're living life not knowing the spiritual laws and thinking, it's okay, it's okay, I don't know my purpose, I can survive. But we're not born to survive because, again, Ayurveda is giving them knowledge, not about this life where you're born here, you married here, and you die here. Ayurveda is about life that is actually tasty and delicious and passionate and blissful because we each remember our first kiss or when we gave the birth or our honeymoon or the wedding or something so Mm, so dear to us and we remember almost every second of that moment same thing in Ayurveda because now a lot of people think of Ayurveda as just a natural <laughs> healing medicine or how to heal your body not at all Ayurveda it's both philosophy spirituality and natural medicine all together and it teaches us how to achieve this bliss and this happiness in life and harmony with ourselves and the loved ones. So then the second goal. We'll talk about the second goal now, which is called Artha. Artha means economic success, flourishment. When you really experiencing the flood, economic success, let's put it this way. But what happens right now in the modern society, most of the people are not talking about harma. What is the purpose? What mainly people do is talk about artha. How to become the successful and have the flood of money. And if their child comes to a mother and says, Mom, I really want to be a painter. Or I want to be a, a designer. Or I want to be a ballerina. A mom will say, what, are you crazy? That's not going to bring you money. I want you to think about law school or medicine school or you're going to be a programmer. This is what's happening in our <laughs> family system. Everybody is desiring artha, economic success, economic flood, and having a lot of material things. And most of the time, if I'll say we're going to talk about dharma, your purpose, a lot of people are like, oh, purpose, why do I need purpose? I want a success. <laughs> And that's why a lot of marketing and PR people are going to twist all of the titles for people who are even teaching spirituality to make it more interested and more hook-like that they're going to get money if they're going to learn the spirituality because nobody's really interested to understand their soul and their purpose because everybody's hungry about money. So I would like for you to actually acknowledge yourself that you're in this conversation because this is very rare. In the modern society, nobody's interested into understanding your soul and your purpose. Everybody's chasing everything else. Can we acknowledge that? And the third one is karma. Karma means enjoyment. It's kind of enjoyment and passion together, like so much passion of enjoyment. And what enjoyment? Of Artha, economic success. And so people right now mainly interested in number two and three, Artha or Kama. And person is spending again so much time and energy getting the education, getting the career to enjoy Artha, economic success. Lots of bags, lots of shoes, lots of purses. <laughs> <laughs> or lots of dresses, cars, and home. And that's where the accent right now in the modern society is. On the two artha and on the three comma. But talking about that if the person does their duty or understanding their purpose in life, that's when the second and third follows. The first one is the duty to understand yourself. Again, dharma is about you and your purpose why you're here and once you understand it then the second and third happens you will experience economic success you will get the enjoyment whether you'll make money or not a lot or not it doesn't matter but you will feel fulfilled but it's not the other way around make sense and the fourth moksha from sanskrit language moksha means 
liberation. Liberation from, from understanding who I am, why am I here, what is my purpose. You liberate it, you achieve this knowledge, the spiritual, emotional, physical knowledge, and now you liberate it, you're free. And people who are not in the spiritual journey, they don't understand what dharma, what moksha is, why do I need the liberation, why do I need fulfillment. They're constantly distracted and they're just running in life. And this is the four fundamental goals that we as a human beings need to achieve in our lifetime. Now we're going to talk about, let's talk about Varnas. So Vedas are explaining that we're born into four Varnas, but these Varnas are important for you to understand as a woman if you made the most important duty in your life and you learn spiritual knowledge as a woman we're born to actually get married and to have children because without the duty as a mother and wife you shouldn't concentrate on these four Varnas because when I share the Varnas about your purpose women think oh Husband, marriage can wait, kids can wait. Let me concentrate on this for Varnas. To know that before you concentrate on your Varna, your main duty as a woman is to make sure that your family experience the true happiness and love and harmony. Because you will not experience, for example, karma, enjoyment, if you're in the middle of the honeymoon, but your kidneys are failing. How can you enjoy life if your health is deteriorating? So we'll get to the health soon, but right now I'm going to talk about four Varnas. So the first Varna called Brahman. Brahman, thousands of years ago, was people who mainly are the teachers and consultants. These were priests or teachers who were mainly consulting kings. They were not earning money because the kings would make them feel so comfortable in their castle or houses where they were living in the kingdom, giving them the best rooms, giving them the get best food. Why do you think they were not giving them money? They were not earning anything. Is it because then they might not be as like forthcoming with what they really think? Like, I know sometimes even when I was like a hypnotherapist or like a relationship coach because I did that for a while because I'm getting paid by this client you can sometimes feel like oh I don't necessarily want to highlight certain things because they'll probably get offended and not want to hire you again beautiful absolutely because when we're getting financial gain we're not gonna be 100% authentic and honest with people. And that's why kings were not paying them, but were giving them the best food, the best rooms, and everything that they wanted. So they can honestly tell them everything that they needed to hear. And kings, it was their duty to listen to them 100%. And the teacher or the priest, Brahmins, would say, you will not go to war with this country. Even though the king was ready for 10 years to attack them, building the soldiers and everything. No, you're not going to do that. Because these priests, Vedas were mainly yogis. They were meditating 90% of their time. And they saw the future. And they saw the impact of this war or this marriage or this children on the kingdom. And so Brahmins are the teachers who are responsible. It's the head of the body who is responsible for the education of our society. And they're closer to higher power. These are usually 3% of our society. 3% of the people who are born are Brahmins. They're teachers now. They are priests, sometimes maybe psychologists who are educating others. They're responsible for bringing the education to the society. 